So how do you evaluate for osteoporosis? Uh, you know, the history is very important. If a person has had a history of uh, fractures in the past, if there is a family history of osteoporosis, if the patient has got some comorbidities for which the person is taking uh, long-term steroids, or if the person says that, uh, you know, uh, she, uh, she is losing height, you can uh, determine that from the clinical features also. After the age of menopause, women will lose up to one or two inches in height. They can bend over, they can, uh, you know, they can, the, the back becomes arched a bit. So there is slight arching of the back and there's loss of height. So these are the clinical features, but by the time such features arise, it is already a bit too late. So one must act before such features arise. Imaging is very important for evaluation of osteoporosis. DEXA scan, um, you know, all of us know about this. DEXA scan means dual energy X-ray absorptiometry. This is a very, uh, you know, you know popularly, popularly practiced investigation for evaluating bone density. This is actually bone mineral density test. But you can also use uh, uh, CT scan and uh, ultrasound to evaluate bone density. But CT scan has a lot of radiation exposure risks. Ultrasound is important particularly for the calcaneus to evaluate bone density in the calcaneus bone. But DEXA scan is the one which is commonly practiced, particularly the hip area and the spinal area. And, uh, you know, you get the roughly, you can get an idea of the risk the person has for osteoporotic fractures. Certain blood tests are also available, not only uh, vitamin D levels and calcium levels, but also some other tests, which I'll talk about a little later. But blood tests largely don't, uh, give much of an information apart from vitamin D. Vitamin D is very important. And there is something called a FRAX tool. This is a fracture risk assessment tool, which combines DEXA scan with history and so many other. And nowadays, uh, it's uh, very important to, you know, uh, develop tools to evaluate various conditions and diseases. You have a tool for almost every disease to evaluate the severity and osteoporosis is no exception. So if we go to the next one, we'll see uh, the risk factors for osteoporosis, early menopause, very important. A person who has had a menopause at the age of 30, say, below the age of 35, premature ovarian failure, premature ovarian insufficiency, or if, uh, you know, a person has to have, uh, you know, a hysterectomy along with bilateral ovaries removal at an early age, that is a very, very high risk situation for the development of osteoporosis. And such patients must be provided with proper hormonal replacement if necessary and proper care to prevent osteoporotic fractures. So age is a non-modifiable factor. Age is uh, something which inevitably causes osteoporosis. As we age, we'll get osteoporosis. All of us will get it. But in women, it's more severe after the age of menopause. But this happens to both men and women as they age and as they approach the older years of life. Medication people who have had long-term steroids, cancer chemotherapy, they're more prone to osteoporosis. Lifestyle, a lot of uh, alcohol consumption, sedentary lifestyle, lack of sunshine exposure, smoking, all these lead to risk for osteoporosis. So if we move on, DEXA scan, as I was saying, is one of the most popular tests and the most informative tests for evaluating osteoporosis indications. It should be done in women after the age of 65 anyway, because they're going to have some degree of osteoporosis. Just to evaluate how much osteoporosis there already is. 
But if there are risk factors, it should be done before the age of 65. How do you interpret? How do you interpret a DEXA scan? A DEXA scans are reported in T scores and Z scores. Now, these are statistical terms, T score and Z score. T score is something which compares the bone density of the person with a young person, say of 30 years of age, and how the density compares with a young person of 30 years. And Z score compares, Z score compares uh, the bone density of the person to the people of that age to which the person belongs, that age and gender, the same age and same gender, bone density comparison, that's a Z score. And the comparison of bone density with a younger person of 30 years, that's a T score. Both these scores are important in evaluating whether a person has osteoporosis or not. Now, this is a paper published uh, in you know, Australia, and it was published online in 2016. Now it says primary osteoporosis is related to bone loss from aging, but secondary osteoporosis results from specific conditions that may be reversible, like uh, you know uh, medications and comorbidities. But aging is something which is not reversible, not modifiable. So that is primary osteoporosis, uh, which affects everyone. And secondary osteoporosis affects the particularly vulnerable group. A thoracolumbar X-ray is useful in, in identifying vertebral fracture, and DEXA is the preferred method of calculating bone mineral density. The density of total hip is the best predictor for a hip fracture, while the lumbar spine is the best site for monitoring the effect of treatment. The T-score compares, uh, as I've already said, with healthy young individuals, whereas the Z-score with the same age group. Uh, T-score of minus 2.5 or less defines osteoporosis. And a negative T-score of minus 2.5 should raise a suspicion of a secondary cause of osteoporosis. Moving on, as I've already said, FRAX uh, assessment tool you know, it depends on uh, the various risk factors which I've already talked about, prior fracture, fracture, parental history, current tobacco use, rheumatoid arthritis, daily consumption. Uh, since we don't have much time, I'll have to uh, go a bit faster. So next one, please. This is the correct range, which should be. Okay, uh, so the next one. So this is something which I've already said. So we need not go into the details of all this. The important thing is that the bone turnover markers, BTMs, which I'll talk about a bit later, are experimental and not really in clinical practice till now. Okay, next one. Biochemical markers for osteoporosis, bone specific ALP, alkaline phosphatase, indicates bone formation. Osteocalcin is also another one, which indicates bone formation activity. And this is another one, urinary n kilopeptide of type 1 collagen. This, in, this indicates osteoclasis or osteoclast activity and vitamin D level. Vitamin D level is uh, practiced clinically, but the other three are not really in uh, clinical practice till now, but are experimental. Next one, please. Another one. Next one, please. So prevention of falls. As we know, falls are a great uh, risk for fractures. Awareness is important. Management of comorbidities. Uh, people who are past the menopause, they have comorbidities, the heart disease, uh, history of strokes, cognitive impairment, problems with eyesight, problem with hearing. So they all have a risk for falls. Judicious medication should be given. Some medication can also cause dizziness. So that should be uh, you know, uh, properly taken care of, support. They, should, they need home support. Those who have already uh, had falls or are prone to falls, they have, should have proper home care. There should be adjustments at home, you know, floors should be such that patients uh, don't uh, have the risk of falling. There should be no trailing wires, there should be no loose carpets, or there should be proper uh, railings on the stairs and hallways, proper lighting. 
motion sensors. You know, sometimes uh, you know uh, the, the light should come on with sensing motion, or whenever the light is uh, low, the uh, automatic lights should come on. Outdoor adjustment should also take place. You know, uh, the patient should wear proper footwear. You know, something like backless shoes or high heel shoes are not good for fall prevention. And lifestyle, lifestyle is very important because uh, you know, you know people of this age group are all sometimes you know they are busy with their grandchildren, so running after grandchildren and you know having uh, you know impediments at home or outside falls are quite common. So after a fall takes place, proper attention is very important. Assessment and long-term consequences, particularly vertebral fractures, if neural damage is suspected, the patient must be transported very, very carefully so that there is no further damage to the neural tracts. And uh, long-term consequences have to be taken care of and long-term care plan has to be chalked out so that you know, the patient doesn't have a miserable life later on. Next one, please. Medications for osteoporosis, preventive, I've already said, therapeutic. Hormones, estrogen replacement therapy is very important. Anti-resorptive agents and bone forming traps. Next one, please. Estrogen replacement therapy, all of us know conjugated estrogens. Estrogens are there or other uh, preparations, estrogen, estrogen valerate. The roots of administration are important. Oral administration or dermal patches or implants, indications and side effects. Indications whenever you have say a premature menopause or surgical removal of the ovaries at an early age. Side effects, very important. Uh, there's a proneness for blood clot formation, thromboembolism, and chances of malignancy, preferably breast, involving the breast, have to be taken care of. Raloxifen is a serum, is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, uh, which is given at 60 milligrams per day. Side effects, it causes menopausal-like symptoms, like hot flushes and all that. But this is very important for bone formation. So raloxifen is another agent which helps bone formation. Next one, please. Uh, biphosphonates. These are very, very important for proper uh, osteoporotic treatment. Uh, various agents are available. Alendronate, risodronate are oral agents. They are given in the dose of... Uh, alendronate is given in a dose of 70 milligram tablets once a week. Risodronate, 35 milligrams once a week. Ibendronate can be given once a month. Zoledronic acid once a year, injectable form. Why, uh, why are they spaced out? Why not daily? Alendronate uh, has to be given once a week because the turnover of bone, osteoblasts and osteoclasts, it's a two to three week cycle. So you have to time it in such a way that uh, the medication is given at the right time for the cycle of osteogenesis. Mode of administration is very important to take these uh, tablets properly uh, on an empty stomach. And the patient has to sit upright for 30 minutes after that because they are very prone to cause mouth ulcers and esophagitis and also a dreaded complication like osteonecrosis and uh, you know, thigh bone fractures, which are rare. Teriparatide, as I've already said, it's an anabolic class of osteoporosis medication. This is administered in the dose of 80 micrograms subcutaneously daily. It can be given as long as two years and uh, it helps bone formation. It's parathormone. Okay, next one, please. Now, this is a new drug, which is a monoclonal antibody. This is a rankle inhibition, as I've already said, receptor activator, uh, K ligand, nuclear K ligand inhibition, which uh, you know, inhibits the action of osteoclasts. So there is less osteoclasts, and so there is more bone uh, maintenance. So this is uh, given once in six months. You know, the dose is once in six months. And this is a very expensive drug, but it is effective. Okay, the next one, please. Okay. Uh, finally, I come to the conclusion slide. Uh, the importance of awareness, I've already uh, you know, emphasized so many times, health education, lifestyle changes, and most important is timely intervention, not only for prevention, but also for treatment. So if we adhere to these principles, uh, we will be able to address this very important problem of osteoporosis in the menopause and uh, you know, improve the quality of life of uh, our women who 
uh, you know, are, um, you know, have crossed the age of menopause and are facing such problems. I think I'll conclude with this.